Hi Aries, this is Eileen with your May 2019 Psychic Tarot Card Reading. And we're starting the month of May with the Wheel of Fortune card. And this is a good way to start the month because if a lot of you Aries have had stressful circumstances, difficulties, felt like you've been held back by life or had the rug pulled out from under you along the way over the past number of months, maybe in recent years. The Wheel of Fortune is a major Arcana Destiny card. And so what this is saying is the energy is here now. The flow is here for you to get on board and look for those changes for the better. Be expecting changes for the better. And just make up your mind that life is going to change for the better for you and do all you can to make that happen. But the energy is here. The energy is with you for that. So um, let me see what else. I'm feeling like some people, I'm, you know, I'm tuning in on a psychic level as well as reading the, um, reading the meanings of the cards. And I'm feeling like there are some people that will see this video and they're so down and so... This might be one person I'm tuning into. It might be a few. But I feel like you've just really feel like you've been set back really bad. Like somehow you just feel like you're under a, a mountain of rocks or something. It's like you, I mean, it's just a heaviness, a heaviness for something about something that's going on in your life. And it's like you want to believe things can be better. You want this. But you're so discouraged. This could be one person I'm tuning into. I mean, it's really difficult when you feel that way, you know. But Aries are naturally optimistic people. I mean, for an Aries, usually it's uh, just to me. I mean, I'm an Aries too. And for me, if I'm having a really bad day or a bad week or a bad month or whatever, I'd rather really, I work my way through it, you know, if I do feel bad or unhappy for a little while. And then I'm saying, okay, no, tomorrow's a new day. You know, it's a new beginning. And I start making a new plan, making new, setting new goals, whatever it is, or just working through whatever it was. If people disappointed me, whatever it is, I just work through it and get that optimism back. And Aries had that natural optimism that next natural um, bounce back ability <laughs> inside of them but I'm picking up on somebody maybe one maybe a few people that feel so down and so heavily burdened uh, maybe some you may have been really hurt in a relationship or something but you gotta you gotta just start looking at the bright side and know that this good energy is here for you for things to start turning in your favor and just remember how how you typically might have been when you when you're typically more optimistic because um, and just start working your way back to that good place because it's such a strong energy for all the Aries to um, get on that wheel that's turn wants to turn in your favor now. Next card we have, and this is one of the um, cards for Aries, a wand card, the Ace of Wands. And this is a really nice card because this represents new beginnings, perhaps in business, at, at a job. Some of you might be starting a new job. I'm feeling too... And now this is a general reading. So some of these cards will resonate with some people while other cards might resonate with others. If I'm doing a private reading, then I'm just focusing in on that person's circumstances. But what I'm feeling here, some of you Aries might be self-employed. And you're just really moving forward in your business. Or if you're not self-employed, you're in a position in your line of work where you have a lot of say-so. You have a lot of freedom and flexibility, authority. You might be in management or you might be in some position of authority that uh, people don't typically question you. They just have faith in you and they trust you to take care of things and get things done the way they should be done. And you're feeling, a number of you are feeling really strong and enthusiastic. I'm feeling more money. I'm feeling more cash flow for a number of Aries right now. Now. Or, I mean, this is May, you know, going into May and everything, but it feels very strong. Like it's not just a little temporary thing. It feels like it's something that's going to be ongoing, going through the year. And you feel good about it. And you know you're prepared for whatever work is ahead of you. It's like you know you're very qualified for it. You're, it's 
suits you just fine. It suits you to a T. You, um, I'm feeling for some people, whatever this work is, you've been doing this for quite a while and you know your work, you know your job really well. And so you're very knowledgeable, take charge, proactive, confident, and the money's coming in and you're pleased about it and you don't want to have it any other which way. You know, it's like you're determined you're going to keep that going. Um, it's just very strong position for a number of Aries. Again, this is a general reading. So for those of you who don't feel that way, I always recommend people learn about the laws of attraction and start practicing the laws of attraction to attract that kind of prosperity, that kind of confident, good, positive feeling of being proactive and being in charge of your own life instead of being totally overwhelmed by life um, because the energy is just really strong in May for Aries, for good things, it looks like. So take advantage of it and just start feeling like you're taking charge of your life. Make it the, your intention to go after what you want and get things the way you want. Because I'm feeling a number of Aries are already in this position here. I'm getting really strong, good um, feelings on that one. Next card we have is the Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords... This is talking about some Aries in May may feel like they're in a dilemma. And you might feel like you've got to choose between two people or two situations. I'm getting more relationship issues here. That's what I'm tuning into more so. Uh, I mean, for some of you, it's choosing between a place to live or a job. But I'm feeling it's mostly relationship for those people I'm tuning in for. That um, you're in between two people. For someone, it might be two friends. And you're not real sure. You know what I'm getting? This might be one person. You have two friends who had been acting like they're your close friend and all that, but you notice they've been talking amongst themselves and they seem to be kind of sharing little secrets among themselves and you seem to be kind of on the outside there. And so you're wondering what's going on. And it's like you don't want to feel like they're not being loyal to you. You're not sure what you should do. That sounds specific. That might be one person or maybe a few people have this going on. But the advice of the Two of Swords is to take off the blindfold. Look, use that sharp sword energy to cut through the fog and see things clearly. As a matter of fact, down here you got the Ace of Swords right below this card. See that? You got this really strong energy from the Ace of Cords that gives you that sharp minded ability to just pierce through things, see things as they are. For some of you, this might have to do with a romantic situation. Some of you might be seeing two different people at one time right now, I feel like. And you're not sure which one is the best choice for you, or if either of them is the best choice. I feel like they might know, each, know about each other, too. They might actually be acquainted with each other or something. It's almost like you're changing your mind about both of them. That's what I feel like. <laughs> that might be for one person. Maybe a few of you having the same dilemma. I don't know. It's like you like both of them, and now something's been going on. You're changing your mind about both of them. Yeah, there's different scenarios I'm getting for different people. But, I mean, the thing is, you're in control. You just need to take off the blindfold, step back a little bit, look at the, th the situation objectively, make decisions that are best for you and your life. And don't let anyone pretty please you into a, 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 a relationship or staying in a relationship or any of that sort of thing. If you're looking clearly at someone, whether it's one person or two people, and wanting to kind of back off and say, no, this person's not right for me, whether it's romance or business or friendship, don't let them persuade you and, and kind of lure you back in. Because I'm feeling here, some of you, whatever your scenario is, that you're rising above something and looking at some people in your life and realizing they're really not what they were pretending to be. Okay, they're not bad, but they're not quite who you thought they were. I'll put it that way. And so if you're feeling... Um, a tendency just to walk away from these people or just kind of distance yourself, even if you're still associating with them, but maybe a little more to distance. I would, I think, listen to your intuition. Listen to your common sense. Let that sword energy help you to see things clearly. And you make those decisions for yourself. Don't let them talk you into something. 
Next card we have is the Knight of Pentacles. And the Knight of Pentacles. This is, now the Pentacles do relate to the Earth signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And these signs typically take their time, lay one brick at a time. They're not in a big hurry like Aries. Us Aries <laughs> tend to be. It's like we want results now or tomorrow at the latest. <laughs> Whereas the Earth signs, they've got patience. And they lay their brick one at a time, their, you know, their foundation. And that because they know they're building something strong and good. And so what this Knight of Pentacles is telling me is that a lot of Aries have learned to slow it down a little bit. Don't be in quite as much of a rush, even though you might still be kind of in a rush a little bit. Like, hurry up, hurry up, let's get this thing going. But a lot of you, I think here have developed self-discipline to have that patience to lay your foundation because you found out in the past that a lot of times when you get overly impatient and rush something, you end up with, you know, something that's not, that's built on shaky ground. So now you're taking your time and you're looking at things clearly. Again, you've got that Ace of Swords energy, which really gives you good clarity, but you've got that inner strength and determination of the Knight of Pentacles in your favor, which has given you a lot of determination, a lot more patience than maybe you've had in the past to get things done the way you want them to be done. Whether this has to do with your career, uh, maybe owning a home or something, or maybe selling one and buying another one, or maybe a relationship getting the right relationship for you and not just having a relationship just so you got somebody to have fun with, you know, but maybe making up your mind, I'm going to pass up on the shallow relationships and really just focus on the ones that could be something meaningful and solid for me and for my life. Regardless, I'm getting different scenarios for different people, but it's going to pay off. That's what this card says. It's going to pay off slowly but surely. Those of you who are practicing having a little more patience than an Aries typically have, and you're just following your path and moving forward, you've got your goals, you've got your, you're looking out, you know what you want. You know what you want for your life, whether this is where to live, how to live, what kind of work you're doing, how much money you want to make, your whatever it is, personal life, you're, you have a very good sense of what you want. And a lot of you have already accomplished a lot and have a lot for yourselves already. So you're all the more not willing to settle for less. And so this Knight of Pentacles, oh, I see a little bunny right here. See the little bunny? The Knight of Pentacles is, <laughs> is, um, is saying that you're going to get there. You're going to achieve your goals because you're, you're not giving up. And so now also for some of you, this Knight of Pentacles re represents someone on a more romantic level. So I feel some of you Aries, if you're single and you're on the lookout and being receptive to um, a romance or a new relationship, someone who could be of one of these earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or they might have a lot of that in their chart otherwise. Someone may be coming into your life in May that could prove to be a, a nice, really meaningful relationship for you. Because this as a person, this person, once again, they want something solid and they're looking ahead at their life. They don't, they know they want to do well in their work and that's what they're working at and they're doing well. They know they want to have a good solid home, but they also want to have a family. They want to have a relationship with someone that's really strong and solid. And so this person is very much going to be one-on-one. -on -one. This person's not dating a lot of different people. When they get to know you, they're going to want to give this a chance and see if you're the right one for them. Some of you might already know this person, actually, or be seeing this person. This represents a potential really good mate for whoever has this person come their way in May. Again, it's a general reading, so this will apply for some people but not others. It's all about the timing. Everybody's on their own path. You're supposed to cross paths with, 
to certain people at certain times. So for those of you that it's time, you could be having this person in your life sometime in May, if you don't already. But this person, serious mind, if they want long-term commitment, they don't want just to have a little fun now. And they want it all. They want to live a good life. This person's going to do well for themselves financially. So this would be a good, solid mate for whoever this is for. Next card we have is the Three of Pentacles. And the Three of Pentacles, this is talking about a lot of Aries working at their career, at their job, whatever it is your, your work is, and doing good quality work. I'm feeling some people are very creative. You might be making something with your hands, maybe painting or creating something, crafting of some kind. I'm not sure. I'm getting that for a number of you, that you're very creative and you've been um, making things that you might be selling or getting ready to sell or already been selling. But others of you, this could be your job where you work at a company that you're being seen as someone who does really good quality work. You're making money at it. And you're pleased with yourself. You're pleased with the work you're turning out. You know you're doing good quality work. The money's coming in. You know you still want to do a lot better. But all signs are pointing to good things ahead for you. That's what I'm getting. This is a very steady, very good, uh, positive card for uh, continued success. And you're, you got it right alongside the Knight of Pentacles talking about you're going to get there. You're getting there little by little, slowly but sure you, surely you're laying a really good foundation for yourself. I kind of feel like these are going hand in hand with each other right here. So this is really good. I like this combination here. And um, so I do feel like a number of you Aries, you're feeling confident, you're feeling strong, you know you want to do more, you want to accomplish more still, you may not be making the amount of money you want right now, but you know you're on the way there. You're going down that path and you have no reason to change course. You're feeling like you're in the groove, you're just going along smoothly, you're doing really good, you're really good at your job, whatever that work is, whether you're creating something or you work at a company doing a particular type of work. I I feel like you just do really good quality work and you're recognized that way by people. Yeah. And this, again, this could represent somebody else for another somebody that's watching the video. This could also, again, represent for some people a romantic interest, which, again, it could be possibly an earth sign like a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or someone who's got that in their chart. That could become a good romantic interest for you. Because both of these here as a person, they're both just focused on doing good quality work, laying a sound foundation for themselves, doing well over the long haul, which they will. It's like they're going to achieve their goals because they're not willing to do any less than that. They, they won't stop until they do. And so they're making good progress. But they both want something solid in a relationship. They're not jumping around with different people and all that, going from one person to the next. They want only good quality for themselves, no matter what it is. Next card we have is a judgment card. And the judgment card, here's another major arcana card here. The judgment card is talking about fairness for whoever has had unfair conditions. Whatever it is, for some of you, it could represent something legally. Maybe if you were cheated in some way or got the short end of the stick and maybe there's some kind of legal something going on, you might find that you're treated very fairly. And the outcome, this is uh, like karma. What you put out, you get back. So if you've been putting out good stuff and working hard and being honest and just living the best life you can and doing your best, and you've still had a lot of difficulties and been uh, treated badly or cheated or one way or another gotten, you know, the rug pulled out from under you. This judgment card is saying that things are going to swing more in your favor. There will be fairness. There will be balance. Things are going to balance out and level out so that you're not on the, <clears throat> excuse me, you're not on the losing end of that situation. Instead, like if you've lost something in the past in an unfair manner, it's like it's going to be on um, the judgment card is saying this might be restored back to you in one way or another. You know, I mean, you never know how the universe works. Um, let's say if you've lost something in the past, something was taken from you in one way or another, or you were treated unfairly, 
you may not get that identical thing or a situation back, but you'll get something just as good or better that will come your way. It's more like that because you can't tell the universe how to deliver your good to you. You know, <laughs> you just have to be open and, and be receptive to it. Okay, next card we have is the King of Wands. And again, the Wands card do represent the fire signs of Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So this is one of our cards here. King of Wands, he's doing well. He's prospering. He's been working hard, but he also likes to enjoy what he has. And I'm feeling like a number of Aries are going to be feeling like they're in the place of the King of Wands in May. Kind of like, yeah, I've worked hard. I, I've been working hard for years and I've done well and etc. But I'm feeling for some of you who are in this position, it's not like you're even worried about how well you're going to continue to do. It's like you know you're going to continue to be fine and do well and prosper. It's like you just know it. You have this sense of knowing inside of yourselves. But for some of you, I feel like there was some relationship you were in in the past, and maybe that was good, and it was a lot of fun for a while, and it fizzled out. You're, you've been alone. You know, maybe you've been on a date or something here and there casually, but I mean, overall, you've been kind of alone, like feeling like you don't have anybody really special in your life. And so you're looking right now, you're watching out there to see who's out there that might be a, a really strong mate for you because you really want to be in love with someone. Um, doing well financially or in your work or having that kind of prosperity in your in your um, life in general. It's, all, it's like I'm, whoever I'm tuning in for, it's nothing new. It's like, yeah, this is nice, but it's nothing new. You know, you want a really good love relationship in your life now. And that's what you're on the lookout for. Now, for others, if that's not you in May, this person might be coming into your life in May, or they might you might already know them to tell the truth. So for some Aries, this could be another fire sign, such as an Aries, a Leo, or a Sagittarius, who's in this position of the King of Wands, and he's watching you and paying attention because he's got, even though he... You know, he comes across very confident and maybe he's well-dressed and has a nice car and lives well and all that. He does well for himself, but he's got some loneliness inside. That's what I keep getting. So he wants love. He wants real, real exciting, happy, wonderful love, ro romance kind of uh, relationship. And that's what he's looking for. So for some Aries, this is going to be somebody around you who's looking at you and being attracted to you and wondering, wondering if you might be that person. Whoever I'm talking to here that I'm tuning in for, I feel like this King of Wands is a little older than you. I don't mean a lot older, but he might be. I feel like I'm, it's for a female Aries and this male King of Wands. I don't know. He might be somebody in your workplace or somebody you've known, maybe around where you live or where you socialize. I feel like he might be five, six, seven, eight years older than you. You know, I'm not saying a big difference, but he's a bit older. A little bit, you know, but not drastically older. So if you're single and looking, just stay receptive. Keep your eyes open there. If, just, if you notice somebody seems to be paying attention to you and kind of quietly watching you, because I feel like that that might be that person I'm talking about. <laughs> But this guy would be a good match. He would be a good a good mate. That's what I want to say. He's already played a lot and had a lot of fun. He, he wants real love now. So he wouldn't be cheating or doing any of that. And, I mean, unless things really turn sour or something. Um, next card we have is the Ace of Swords. And again, I mentioned this one earlier. The Ace of Swords gives you that mental clarity in May to see through the fog, cut through the fog with that sword energy and see things, see people, see circumstances as they are. So if someone's trying to give you a story about something, you're going to be very sharp minded and clear headed in May where you're going to just look at that person who might be giving you some story that's 
that's not exactly true or accurate and thinking, uh-uh, no, no, I know that's not right. I know that's not how it was or how it is. And you're going to be, and of course, Aries are fairly outspoken anyway. So you're not going to be a little quiet and silent about it. You're going to speak up and say, no, I, I don't think you're correct on that. And you're going to be setting the record straight. And, <laughs> you know, it's not that you're going to lose your temper and tell people off, but you're going to be very clear and very aware of what something actually is rather than fall for some story somebody's trying to tell you. This could be a personal relationship. It could be business. It could be some money situation. You, nobody's pulling the wool over your eyes in May, that's for sure. Not that they would typically, but in May you've got some really good, strong mental clarity, that strong... Um, sword energy and you're and you're not going to be afraid anyway and Aries wouldn't be anyway to speak up and say no no that's not correct what you're saying it's like this it's not like that you know and I know this as a fact that's what I'm feeling for some of you dealing with people um in May okay next card we have this is another major arcana destiny card the fool card and here is another really nice card because the fool is talking about some kind of unexpected opportunities that might come your way by the end of may so for some of you you might be looking for a new job and i'm feeling it is kind of like a delightful unexpected something for some of you and it could be in the way of work uh, maybe you've been looking for a job and applied here and there. Maybe you sent a resume a while ago to some place that you were interested in, never heard back from them, and just figured they weren't interested in you. And then all of a sudden, you get a phone call or an email or whatever from them that they're interested and they want to speak to you. They want you to come in. Um, it could be something like that for someone. It could be some kind of business opportunity. Some of you are already kind of starting to kind of dabble in a little bit, is what I'm feeling like for some people. That might be one person I'm tuning in for. It might be a few. That there's some kind of little business opportunity. Yes, some of you, it might be something you've been kind of pondering, some kind of little business to start or some kind of little money-making something. And then you start getting your feet wet, maybe by the end of May. And you're thinking to yourself, you know, this, this should really be a really good potential for this long term to pay off really well. But at the same time, you're not, you don't want to be grabbing for a pie in the sky. At the same time, you're kind of being realistic. Like your feet are on the ground, although this fool's feet are not really on the ground. <laughs> um, I'm feeling like those Aries this pertains to, your feet are still solid on the ground. You're kind of pondering something and thinking, yeah, I think this could probably pay off pretty well long term. But you're not getting yourself overly enthusiastic because you're realizing, well, it seems that way, but it may not work out that well. I'm feeling for some of you who are in this scenario, in this situation by the end of May, that it could very well be something very surprisingly good for you as time goes by. That's what I'm feeling like. That would really please you. Yeah, it's, it's just you're trying not to get, because Aries can get really enthusiastic and then start pursuing something and then all of a sudden it's like your bubble has burst or something you know so so it's it's almost like after you've been through that so many times you kind of learn to temper it a little bit and say well it seems like it could be good but let me wait and see <laughs> so I mean I'm an Aries I know about these things <laughs> but this looks really promising for whoever this applies to Okay, because it's a general reading. Some cards will pertain to some people, others for others. But, and it could be a new job for some people. It could be a new business opportunity or some business that you've kind of been kind of making plans for. You had it maybe a little, some notes on a piece of paper and you never got, quite got it off the ground. I think this card is saying, hey, start doing something on that. Get it off the ground, you know, get it moving and see what happens. You know, you don't have to spend a, a ton of money. Maybe spend a little bit of money and just kind of start getting your feet wet and see how it goes. Because it's this is holding a lot of potential here. Potential for good outcomes. And then the last card we have is the Three of Swords. Well, you know, I guess a little rain must fall. So for a number of Aries or some Aries, you might find that this is what I'm getting here. I'm getting relationship matters. This is, again, general reading. This card, everybody will not get the Three of Swords. But for those of you who do, 
I don't feel like you're shedding too many tears. I feel like instead it's a matter of I've had enough of this, you know, with some people that you thought were either your friends, coworkers, that you, you're just tired of it. Whatever it is, you've had enough of it. You're not putting up with any more of this. And you are in the strong position. And uh, whatever they've done, they just haven't been sincere for one thing. They've been, uh, I get negativity, got maybe gossip, maybe something. They're jealous. They're, uh, I don't know what it is. They're, they're miserable. Whoever they are, they're not happy. So they gossip, they're jealous, they have all that kind of stuff going on. They're kind of lower lower level energies, you know, lower energies as they say. And you are in no mood for the nonsense. You're not. It's like, uh-uh, I've got much more things to be thinking about and doing from myself, from my life. I have a life going on here. I'm not going to be slowed down by people who are playing games, who are acting like they're my friend when they're not. Uh, or whatever. I mean, this could be for somebody. This could be a romantic interest that you found out they've been seeing somebody else, you know, while smiling in your face. I mean, I'm I'm getting I'm just getting different friendship betrayals of some on some level, and that the Aries this applies to. You're not exactly sitting around crying. Crying. It's like you're you're kind of aggravated. You really have a no nonsense attitude about it. Like you could just as soon leave them in the dust, and that's what you end up doing. That's what I feel like. It's like even if you're still dealing with them for whatever the reason, if it's people at work or might be relatives, you know, you're having that kind of issue with. It's like so for some of you, this could refer to people that you'll still see around, be around them. Or, in one way or another, but you have, it's like you've got their number. You're not falling for any more of their, their stuff. So, and you've got much better things for you in store. That's what I'm getting. You're, you're really in the strong position there. Okay, now this deck I've been using, this is the Gilded Tarot by Cheryl Marchetti. And what I want to do now is pick one card from the uh, Magical Mermaids and Dolphins by Doreen Virtue. So let me shuffle these. Okay, mermaids and dolphins, what's your message for Aries for May 2019? What is your message, mermaids and dolphins, for Aries? And if you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. So you'll be notified when I post new videos. And if you have subscribed already, I thank you for your subscriptions. Also, check for your rising and moon signs as they come available. I'm just beginning the videos now. Aries is my first one. And so uh, just keep checking as the days are going by for your rising and moon signs. Okay, what is the message for Aries for May 2019? Also, feel free to leave your comments. I welcome your comments. And if anyone would like a private reading, my rates and contact info are listed below. Okay. All right, mermaids and dolphins. I'll give them one more shuffle, and I'll fan them out. Mermaids and dolphins. What's the message for Aries for May 2019? Aries for May 2019. Okay. Oh, I like the sound of this. This says break free, try different ventures and experiences as a way to grow and learn. That's good advice. I like that. Break free, try different ventures and experiences as a way to grow and learn. All right, and then now I'm going to pick one card from Nature's Whispers by Angela Hartfield with artwork by Josephine Wall. So let me shuffle these cards. Okay, now what's the message for Aries for May 2019? Aries, what is the message for Aries for May 2019? Aries, May 2019. What is your message for Aries for May 2019? I'll give it one more shuffle and fan them out. What's the message for Aries for May 
2019. Let me fan these out now. Okay. This one says Inner Truths. That's number 16, so I'll look them up. Oh, this is the one with all the crystals. Kind of like she's in a crystal canyon or something. I don't know if you can see those. There is so much detail. I just love these cards. Whenever I see this, it reminds me of a, um, it wasn't crystals. It was limestone or something, caverns I went to years ago um, in Florida where I live. And they had the, uh, what do they call them, the stalag stalagnites and stalactites. One of them hangs high from the ceiling, stalactite. But it's all these limestone deposits, and it looks kind of, it reminds me of the, these images. But they were everywhere. It seemed like they were on the floor, the walls, the ceiling. It was really, it was like down in a cave. Kind of, it was a cavern. They called it a cavern. Okay, let me look this up. Number 16, Inner Truths. Let's see. 16. Where are you? Did I pass it up? Wait. Oh, I passed it up. Okay. Inner Truths. Here it is. There is a lot of depth to your feelings. You are on your way to understanding your feelings and desires more clearly. The next steps on your path will soon reveal themselves. Stay vigilant to new opportunities that may lead to the beginnings of novel projects or assist with current ventures. Look around you and within you. Be willing to do the work at the deepest level as you will find jewels of wisdom, knowledge, and the inner voice all waiting patiently to assist you. Nature's crystals are created deep within the earth. Go deep and find your own treasures. That's a really good message. And I feel like in some ways it does tie in with the reading. That's a good card. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to pick one card from the um, Archangel Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue. So Archangels, what's the message for Aries for May 2019? Aries, May 2019. What is the message for Aries for May 2019? What's your message, Archangels, for Aries for May 2019? Okay, I'm going to give it one more shuffle and fan these out. Okay, let's see. Oh, I like this. This is nice. Angel Therapy. Archangel Raphael, give your cares and worries to us angels and allow us to take your burdens. I love that. That's comforting. That's a comforting message. Look at the pretty colors in this card. Really beautiful. Angel Therapy, Archangel Raphael. Well, hey, it's not, not focusing in very well. Still kind of blurry. Give your cares and worries. Why is that not focusing right? Give your cares and worries to us angels and allow us to take your burdens. I like that a lot. I really do. It reminds me of when I started out the reading with the Wheel of Fortune. And I said I was tuning in to maybe a few people or one or two or more people with regard to the Wheel of Fortune that had such a heaviness, they just felt so bogged down and unhappy and just kind of like they were in darkness. And those times when you're in darkness, that's when it's all the more important to hand your troubles over. I mean, in my case, I do this to God and my guardian angels. Because if you're doing everything you're in control of doing, you're doing everything you can to help yourself. And then you just put your faith in God and your guardian angels or who, whatever higher power you believe in, the universe. Um, it, it's, all, it's all on the same path, you know. It's, it's not thinking you can do everything. You do everything you can that's in your power and then have faith in the higher powers that are above us. 
and um, and things usually turn out pretty good that way. <laughs> so, I mean, over the long haul, you may not know it initially. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, Aries, this ran kind of long, but I hope you like your video, your reading for May. Be sure and check for your rising and moon signs as they come available. And go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so yet, so you'll be notified when I post new videos. I'm just starting all the videos for May now. Hopefully, I'll make it all the way through all 12. I couldn't get quite through all 12 last month for April. But anyway, I expect to do them all this time. So, um, and feel free to leave your comments. I welcome your comments. If anyone would like a private reading, my rates and contact info are listed below. So thank you for watching my video and have a wonderful May.